Did you ever go through something that was so hard that you said, oh my God, it broke my spirit? It didn't break your spirit because your spirit can't be broken. What it did was break the vessel. And that is what this new moon energy is about, breaking free from something that contains you. Swati is about setting yourself apart from the group. The constellation itself, the stars are very far from the ecliptic. So this is about breaking free from the pack. And the point of doing that is because when you are one of many, you don't stand out. So this is the star of individuation. This is the star of you separating yourself from a situation, from a scenario, from a set of beliefs, but setting yourself apart so that you can walk your path in the way that you need to. And you need the freedom of being individuated from the group to be something different. And you need to be able to set yourself apart from the group, go against the grain, be unique, be seen, because your path and your contribution is different than anybody else's. So if somebody's going to hear your voice, if somebody's going to understand what it is that you have to say, you have to speak clearly. And you can't be one of many. You have to be the one. The deity attached to Swati is Vayu, and Vayu is the wind. And wind is associated with prana, and prana is, of course, the life force. So the life force being associated with spirit. Think about when you meditate. You meditate and you come into an altered state and that is when the veil is very thin and you blend with spirit. This can be in your meditations. This yin energy can be, some people use marijuana or other substances, but it's that kind of a space that you create where you're blending with spirit so that actually spirit is moving through you. And again, this is the purpose of Swati, is you have work to do in the world, so it's not just that you're meditating to meditate. You meditate to get in touch with yourself. You meditate to get in touch with the cosmic knowledge that is within you in order to have it flow through you. And that's really what Swati is about, is the energy, the spirit moving through you. You are the vessel. So what will happen is you use your own experiences. You use the fountain of your own experiences. Swati creates these playful spaces where we can learn. It's associated with things like video games, virtual reality, science fiction, also dreaming, astral projection. So being in these spaces where we are able to, where we're fully immersed in some other reality and we have to know the difference. So we have to know, we have to be individuated from that alternate reality. And while it's interesting to talk about in a really hypothetical sense like this, in kind of an esoteric sense, the truth, the actual reality of it is that in our waking lives, we are also immersed in this illusion. We are immersed in belief systems. We are immersed in relationships. We are immersed in situations that they themselves are illusion. And Swati teaches through loss. So while it creates this nice, playful place for you to grow and learn, the ultimate lesson is that it is not you you, the person, who is making anything happen. The reason anything happens is because you align with spirit and spirit flows through you and then it happens. But the key is your alignment with spirit, thus the prana, thus the creation of the space. Some people think it is not a good idea at all to immerse themselves in the material world or to be part of the material world, but that's the only way that you learn. If you are never around people who lie to you, you don't understand what lying is. Thus, you don't really understand what truth is. If you are in situations where your resolve is not tested, how do you know you have any resolve? If you are in situations where your values are tested, how do you know what your values are? So Swati is about you being an individual and stepping away from group values to recognize your own value. The new moon is a very watery affair. It is going to be very, very emotional. 
the chart dominants are Pluto, Neptune, and Mars. So you have Neptune, the planet of dreams, entertainment, illusion, the dissolving of barriers, so you're not actually sure what's what. Then you have Mars, the planet of action, the planet of the soldier, the planet of initiation. And you have Pluto, think Hades, the underworld, going through hell, the planet of transformation, the planet of difficulty, the planet of secrets, the planet of things that aren't seen. So you have illusion being cast. Then you have the reality of you've seen the illusion. What are you going to do with it now? And then you have the transformation, the change that occurs because we never, after we go through hell, we don't emerge the same person. So you have this transformation. So at this point, you have an element of control, but Pluto also takes control away from you. We're coming up on eclipse season, so this is an opportunity for you to still be in control because when the eclipses come, things come in, things come out, and you have no element of control. It just happens. So preceding eclipses, the universe gives you a lot of opportunity to handle things on your own. Otherwise, the universe will just take care of it for you and align you on your path. Something that works a lot like an eclipse is Uranus, which we have here. You have of the sun and moon, and then you have an opposition with Uranus. What's going to happen is moon is in Swati, sun is in Swati. So it means it's a dark moon, it's very internal. And then you have Uranus, which is in the nakshatra of Bharani. Swati is about loss, Bharani is about loss. The nakshatras teach lessons through loss. Swati is associated with prana, and then Bharani is associated with yama, the god of death. In breathwork, it's called pranayama, so pranayama. Each time we take a breath, it's a new life. Each time we exhale, it's a new death. So this is the constancy right, of the spirit flowing through us. All right, now what to pay attention to in this chart is you're in some simulation. You are in some setting. And we'll go through with each sign what is going to happen. But you're in some setting. And in order to step away from the setting, you will be confronted with something. So what will happen? There's a situation you're enmeshed in. There's a situation where maybe you're not running your own program. You're just, you're involved in something else. Or there's a set of values you're immersed in, but there's something you're immersed in. And it's opposed to Uranus. So in opposition. And when an opposition occurs, you'll be confronted with something, some information or the loss of something, and that is going to help you individuate from wherever the new moon is taking place for you. The role of secrets is powerful. Swati is associated with royalty, monarchs, people who marry into royalty. Also, a dominant planet of this new moon chart is Pluto, and Pluto rules plurocracy. What that is, is a small concentration of power among a group of people, like royals. So watch in the next two weeks how secrets about royals may come out, or secrets about power may come out. Now let's look for a minute about the role of secrets and power in your own life. What's one of the best ways to have power over somebody? Have a secret about them. And the only way that they will not be under your control is when that secret gets exposed. So why don't we more readily expose secrets? Think about all of the things you have to lose. Not like it's a good situation usually if you are immersed in secrets, but there's some reason why you don't call something what it is. There are consequences to calling things what they are. There are tangible losses to calling things what they are. There are losses of relationships, of families, of group associations if you call things what they are. But lies are part of the illusion, part of the deception. Lies themselves can build a structure and we get stuck in these structures, government structures, community structures, family structures, the histories that have occurred, the things that have taken place, the things nobody wants to revisit and they get buried and then we live with that energy. And everybody living with that energy moves a little differently, communicates a little differently. There's an undercurrent when there are secrets. 
and it's unmistakable. The only way to be set free from those secrets is to expose them. But doing so often comes at a loss. And so that's more what this energy is talking about. With the combination of Swati and Uranus and Bharani, two nakshatras that are about loss. But the benefit of it, even if it comes at a loss, you are still set free. Because by exposing a lie, by seeing something that exposes the delusion, then you can be set free from it. Then you can break out of that simulation. Then nobody is casting their illusions on you. You're not under somebody else's spell. You, being set apart from this, can speak your truth. You can be what you are supposed to be, but you will never be that if you live in a system of secrets. Scorpio, this new moon energy is occurring in your 12th house. The 12th house is the house where you go to be alone. It's the house of retreat, spirituality, psychic abilities. It's also hospitals, prisons, asylums, addiction, recovery from addiction, but places of escape. So the Swati energy is about spirit moving through you and you being the vessel to bring something into the world. And the 12th house is how you get in touch more with spirit in order to bring it into the world. So your effectiveness in being able to bring something in has a direct correlation with 12th house, where you are here, because the cleanliness of your vessel in thought, in practice, in word, in deed, in conduct, the cleanliness of your vessel, the purity of your vessel dictates what the purity of what you bring into the world is. And so this new moon is going to have you examining what you're bringing in. And so it's going to bring attention to where maybe your vessel is not what it needs to be. And there are different ways that that can occur. Escape can look many different ways. Some people escape with drugs. Some people escape with alcohol. Some people escape with TV. 12th house, um, Neptune rules it. So 12th house, uh, Neptune also rules entertainment. Right? So escapism. So if you're watching Netflix, if you're drinking, if you're smoking, whatever you're doing, escapism can be taken to, it can be taken to extremes where if you use it, uh, whatever, however you use it, but it can be taken to, to extremes. Now in the same way, and people don't talk about this enough, so can things like yoga or meditation or spiritual practices because anytime you are connected, it's a beautiful feeling, but when you do that too much, you're escaping because then you're not in the real, like then you're not in the material world. So while we go to connect and to have that balance and to have that connection, spirituality, uh, the function of it is not escapism. Some people use it for that, but that's, that's not the point. It's not why, that's not why. That's would be considered something along the lines of an abuse of spirituality. If you spend all day meditating, what's the difference? What are you doing? The point is not so you become such a great meditator. It's so that you're in touch with, with the cosmic ocean of your knowledge and you can do something with it, but in the world. So the Uranus energy is going to be occurring in your sixth house and the sixth house is the opposite of the 12th house. The 12th house is the house of spirituality, escapism, it's the void. Sixth house, that's the world. That's your day-to-day -day routines. That is the house of slavery. That's the house of coworkers. That's the house of your schedule. It's like what you do in a day, how you run your energy in a day. What are the activities that you do in a day that will accumulate to something? But it's how you spend your day. And what your spiritual life looks like is actually reflected in how you spend your day, how you speak to people, how you use your time, what you work toward, the quality in which you work towards something, your conduct in the everyday. These are the things that actually contribute to your spiritual growth. Now, sixth house is also where Swati lives. So it's immersion in the material world. So what's going to happen is you are going to see something in the everyday, something sixth house. So something's going to be taken from you or you're going to come to some revelation. 
but something's going to be brought to your attention, but it's Uranus. So it's going to become, it's just, it's going to come out of nowhere. You will not expect it. You can't anticipate it. You can't ever guess what Uranus is going to bring you or take from you. But Uranus is lightning. Uranus quick strikes and you will, you won't miss it. But something in your sixth house is going to come to your attention through exposure, through loss, but something in your sixth house, sixth house is going to be brought to your attention. And what it is going to highlight is a 12th house issue, some constraint that's probably self-imposed, but something you've been doing in the 12th house that has been limiting what your actual expression can be. Some way that you didn't realize, you didn't realize you were doing it. You're going to see some blind spot, but you're going, it's going to show up in your day-to-day routines. And then it's going to highlight for you something in your spiritual life something in how you're using your psychic abilities, right? Something it's going to come like um, how you're using your dream work, but it's going to be bringing to your attention where you've been limiting yourself and where there's more available to you if you were to do things differently, but you wouldn't know to do things differently unless until this is shown to you. So it's going to be shown something from your sixth house. Then you'll understand the constraints that you've been working under probably unconscious restraints. And when you understand those, then you can be set free from them. Then you can expand and be the fuller expression of what you're actually bringing into the world. But you'll learn those constraints from the sixth house and only by learning them are you set free from them. If you call me.